everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a copy of Lord of Bones. It's a dungeon crawler game that works great with kids. At least my kids really enjoyed the game. And the game is published by Treffle. It is said that in the dark dungeons of the Lonely Mountains dwells a terrifying undead creature, the Lord of Bones. He commands a legion of skeletons animated by black magic, and legends speak of countless treasures in huge chests which the Lord jealously guards. Will you confront him and his skeletons? Will you try for his treasures? Hurry because the gold attracts greedy adventurers. Just look around your table now. Songs of glory will only praise the victor. So each player will choose a character by picking a character board. There are eight different possible characters on four different boards. Each board will show a character's name, their special ability, their health, and the maximum number of dice tokens that they can hold. Then there are slots for different types of attributes gained while in the dungeon. The red sword represents strength. The green bow represents dexterity. The blue represents magic. And the yellow mask represents wit and charm. Each character will have one of their attributes colored, giving them one of those attributes at the beginning of the game, and later one card of each attribute can be uh, added to each section. The other side shows two slots for sacks, which can be items that are not of those four main attributes. Players will are trying to level up their characters with items to help them fight the Lord of Bones, which they will face at the end of the game. Each player will start with three actions to perform on their turn. There are some nifty boots that you can gain, and that gives you four actions per turn, and other items will give a player some type of advantage while exploring the dungeon. And players are working together, but also the winner of the game is the player who gains the most points themselves. So points are represented by this crown icon, which are on item cards that are equipped some skeletons that you defeat have them, and each Lord of Bone card has one of those, or five of those, and each curse token is worth one point at the end of the game as well. Anyways, on a player's turn, uh, they can use actions to perform three different actions and you can move each tile is composed of two spaces so you'll be able to move from one end of a tile to the other end of that same tile or from one end of a tile to the other end of a different tile following the paths and the connections that are placed out if there is an encounter token in the way then you cannot move through it until you have resolved that encounter which is one of the other actions that you can take Whenever you move to a legal spot, if there is a picture shown, then you can choose to resolve that picture if you choose, but traps you have to resolve no matter what. Let's go over these icons and see what you might find in the dungeon. First, the ladder. This is where all players will start the game, and this is where they descend into the dungeon. The campfire is used when resting, and you will transport your character here when performing the rest action or when doing other actions that tell you to do it. These stars are encounters. Some of them have half of a star, and if another tile is placed to complete that star icon, then an encounter token is placed on top. Or when a tile is placed down with the entire star showing at that time, then an encounter token will be placed on top of it. This is a trap. When you enter, you will roll a die, and if the result is a skull, then you will lose one health token. This dice icon lets you add a dice token to your hero card, but only if you have space on your board to place it. These dice icons can be used when fighting to add an additional die to your roll, making it more likely that you win in your fight. This is the crypt. You will draw the top encounter card from any encounter pile, level 1, 2, or 3. If it's a skeleton, then you must fight it. If it's an item, then you will keep it. And then your turn ends, even if you still have more actions to take. You will then move your character to a campfire of your choice that is out in the dungeon. This is a well, and here you can restore your character's health to the maximum by adding health tokens back onto your player board. This is a merchant, and you will be able to exchange any number of your acquired encounter cards for the same number of any cards from the encounter discard pile. This is a teleport, and you can move your character immediately to another space and resolve its action if you moved on to an icon that is shown on the map. 
This is a lever, and it will let you rotate any empty dungeon tile. The dial has to have no characters or tokens on it, and it will move 180 degrees. And if the new layout creates an encounter symbol, then you will ignore it. You do not put encounters on these tiles. This is the forge. Here you can craft any number of item cards that you have materials for. We'll go over that later. This is the mirror and it'll let you transport your character immediately to another mirror space out in the dungeon. And lastly, this is the dark gate. This tile will only come up in the last five dungeon tiles and when a character discovers it, they will complete their turn and then the final battle begins. The other way to trigger the last battle is when all four Lord of Bone cards have been flipped over. And those are all the possible icons or actions that may appear in the dungeon. The second possible action a player can take on their turn is exploring, and this action is how you put tiles into the dungeon, out on your table. If the active player is on the space with an open path, then they will draw a tile for each open path from the space that they're currently on. And this could be up to three, but that player will then be able to rotate the tiles and place them where they would like. Each new tile will need to connect to a path where the character is currently located, and after placing the tiles, encounter tokens are placed onto any tiles that have the encounter symbol on them. The third action that a player can perform is to resolve an encounter token, and if a player has their character adjacent to an encounter token, they can resolve this as an action, and it will count as one of your actions to resolve one encounter token. And if you are adjacent to two, then you will need to choose one of them to perform your action, and you can resolve the other one if you so choose with your second action. To resolve an encounter, you will choose to flip over a card from either the level one, two, or three deck. If the card is an item card, you will take that card and equip it if you'd like to onto the matching symbol area on the side of your player board. And then you will remove the encounter token. If the card is a skeleton, now it's time to fight. You defeat skeletons or your enemies by having all the icons shown on the right side of that card. You can get these symbols from the printed attributes on your player board, attributes from all your equipped items on your hero board, and from items from rolling dice. Now, we have talked about the starting attribute that a player starts with and how adding items to each slot can give you even more of these icons. So the last thing is rolling dice. You will roll two dice normally, and some characters have an ability where they will roll three, then you can discard any number of dice tokens that you have to add more dice to your roll. Another character's ability will let you roll two extra dice per dice token. You compare all of your icons with the icons shown on the skeleton card or that enemy and you succeed in battle if you do. If you have all those icons, if you don't, then you lose in battle. Lastly, instead of taking actions, you can instead rest. And no actions are taken when resting. You uh, recover all of your health tokens and transport your character to any space in the dungeon with a campfire on it. If you have no health tokens, then you must rest. And those are the three main actions that you'll be taking in the game, four if you count resting. So now let's talk about some of the interesting things that the game has that I haven't mentioned yet. So items can be crafted in forges found in the dungeon, and this is a good way to make your character stronger and become ready to fight the Lord of Bones. Items can be found when resolving an encounter, but to get specific items or more powerful items, you might want to visit the forge. Items are divided into three groups. Level 1 items will increase one of your attributes by one. Level 2 items will increase your attributes by two. And level 3 items will give you a skull which is needed in combat with those stronger enemies. So when entering a forge, you will take a look at all the encounter cards. And at the bottom of each card, there are materials that you can use to craft items. And you will compare your materials with any of the item cards that are left still out in the deck. And you will spend materials to form those new items. Any leftover materials are wasted, or you can use them to craft another item with the matching materials for that item. The encounter cards used for materials are discarded, and you have new items that can be equipped immediately, or you can keep them next to your hero card without equipping them if you would like. 
So that's the best way to get more powerful items. Something else you should be aware of is when drawing an encounter card, you might flip over a card with an enchanted crystal. These can be equipped with your items of uh, the matching color or icon, but you can only have one enchanted crystal of each type. And these crystals will make your character stronger, but they draw their power from the Lord of Bones himself, which will make the final battle more difficult for you. In addition, the level three encounter deck has four cards that will be uh, getting you closer to the final battle. Whenever you draw a card with the shadow of the Lord of Bones, you will flip over one of the Lord of Bone cards face up. Each shadow card has an enchanted crystal that can be equipped, but when the fourth Lord of Bone card is turned over face up, then the final battle will begin. Or if the dark gate appears on the map like I previously said, talked about, it will also trigger the final battle. Before facing the Lord of Bones, everyone can restore their health and dice tokens to their maximum. To defeat the Lord of Bones, you have to win four duels with him, represented by the four cards. The player who triggered the battle will go first, and like skeleton cards, each Lord of Bones cards has symbols needed to defeat that card on the side for each duel. The players take turns dueling. First, the active player will roll as many dice as the number of enchanted crystals equipped under their hero card. For each result, they will add a curse token matching the same icon. These are additional requirements that the player must meet to win that duel. Like I said, those crystals make it harder. The player then attacks as usual, rolling dice, and if their hero and items and dice results have the required icons, they win the duel and take the Lord of Bones card and its curse tokens as they are worth points as well. If they fail, the player loses one health token and the Lord of Bones card stays out waiting for another challenge. The curse tokens are returned to the supply as they are randomized again for each duel and each player depending on the number of enchanted crystals that player has. Regardless of the result, the next player in clockwise order then performs their duel. The game ends when all players don't have any more health or when all four Lord of Bone cards are defeated. Scoring is done by counting uh, points on each item card that you own. Some skeleton cards that you've defeated in the level three deck have points. Each Lord of Bone cards is worth five points each and each curse token is worth one point each. The player then with the most points wins the game. And well, that's Lord of Bones. It feels like an intro dungeon crawler that isn't too simple, but also isn't too complex. And for me and my family, the game actually really works well for us. We have played some dungeon crawlers that have been too simple for, for the kids, and then plenty that were very complex and too much for them. The Lord of Bones hits that complexity just right for us to enjoy it when playing with the family. And my family, we have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. The five-year-old still needs help, but the seven-year-old does really well. And I think this game could last until they are teenagers. So the complexity is at its place due to choosing between one of three or four actions when it's your turn, strategically placing the dungeon tiles to form a map, and to create or not create encounter sites, and choosing which level of possible skeletons that you want to fight. The items are all available if they're out in that deck still, so that can be kind of intense for some players. So players also will get to choose which items they want and will have to make a lot of choices when doing this. So when developing your character, that also adds to the complexity of this game. None of these mechanics are really hard to understand on themselves, but when combined together, it lifts the game's complexity to that sweet spot that we like. We thought that the dungeon had a lot of icons in it as well. You, they give you actions. They were exciting each time they came up. Some built off of each other. It was exciting to finally get another mirror when in the perfect spot or when a trap was placed out in a spot and no one really wanted it to be there. Players uh, have characters that all start a little bit differently as well. Each have their own starting attribute uh, to get them started, but then each has a special ability that should be used and focused on as much as possible. Each character also has their own health spaces and dice tokens slots, and you can only collect the numbers shown on that player board. So some characters have more dice token slots than others, but others have more health than others, which do you want more? Well, both, but it really depends on how you like to play the game or how the game runs at, at that time. 
We had no problems with the game mechanics and appreciated what the game offered, and we had fun with it. The art in the game was not horrible, not amazing. I'd say it was good. The skeletons on the enemy cards were different enough from each other that it wasn't the same picture each and every time, but the enemies were all pretty similar skeletons. It would have been cooler if they had different styles or something to make them different, but they were still done well. The game focused more on the functionality than the art, which is fine. The cards were all very easy to read and understand all the information on there. The items had a picture of an item with a solid background. Again, easy to see and know what the item is, but there could have been like some cool art in the background of those pictures. I don't know. The icons all made sense and the choice of better items required more materials like they should in the game. Uh, the skull needed to defeat the level three monsters is great because you can get super lucky with a roll, but you really needed to craft a level three item to do so. So the game makes sense as you will most likely start attacking easy monsters or easy skeletons and then gradually increase to the harder ones when your character is further developed and you find more items and make more items. The only bad thing about this game is the production. The rule book looked like my seventh grade project. There's colored printer paper with a plastic spine to hold it together. The game box itself would never survive a uh, United States Postal Service or Amazon delivery as it uses thin cardboard box and it probably should be thicker. Probably the same thickness as the player boards and the dungeon tiles, which work for those, but not for the box. Everything else is pretty good. The dice were decent quality, not stickered, but screen printed and the tokens are all good and they work well. The cards are maybe a tad thin. The player meeples were my favorite, super cool, screen printed with character designs that are different one from another and match the characters from the player boards. But ultimately, we are very pleased with the game. We know we can't uh, you know, stack other games on top of this when it's on the game shelf back here, but I feel like it will get lots of playing time on the table, especially if my kids are picking out the game. They had a blast with this. So explore the dungeons of the Lonely Mountains with your family and friends in Lord of Bones by Treffle. Again, this is Board Game Brody and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.